Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at a quick and dirty 40 meter dipole that I made from stuff laying around the house here. Now my intent is to use this sort of out in the field or maybe at a park or something like that just for a quick mobile deployment. I don't have any plans to run HF in the mobile while I'm driving but what I wanted to do is have a setup where I could go to a park, spend an hour or two uh, put my antenna out, maybe make a few contacts, have a sandwich and a soda or something along those lines. I've noticed a lot of guys on YouTube and some of my friends around here locally have been uh, setting up these sort of semi-portable stations and having a lot of fun with it. So I figured I'd jump in and join the party too. So again, I'll mention that I threw this all together really quick this afternoon with junk I had laying around here. If it is something that I have time for and that I'm going to do on a regular basis, I think I'm going to make some improvements to this setup. But for now, I'm going to test it out the way that I've constructed it here and see what happens. So here's a look at the cutting board with the pattern traced on it. You can see here I've got my scroll saw set up. And I'm going to try and cut it out using that. Okay, so here's a look at the cutout. Now you can see the edges are a little jagged, so I'm going to need to clean those up with a file or some sandpaper. And I didn't quite follow the lines exactly that I traced, but I was really never known for being able to follow lines with scissors when I was a kid. And I guess nothing's changed now that I'm 45. But anyway, let's get this thing cleaned up and see what we can do with it. As you can see, I've brought back the template and put it onto the center support. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there are locations for holes here on the template. They printed kind of light. But what I'm going to do now is drill some of these holes. Now this configuration is not set in stone. Not exactly sure how I want to use this thing, or I, I may have a couple of variations of it. So one possible configuration is to hang this thing from a tree. So I'd only need one or two holes on the end for that. But then another configuration might be to attach this to a pole with zip ties or a clamp or something like that. So I might need extra holes for that. And then even another thought would be to put an SO239 connector in the middle of this thing or something along those lines. So again, not sure exactly which way I want to go, but I am going to drill these outer holes and maybe a center one to start with and then just kind of see how things end up. So as you can see, this stuff kind of melts when you drill it. So it's going to have some burrs that are going to need to be taken off of here. But otherwise, I think we're okay. So as you can see, I've got one leg of the dipole wound on here already. And it seems to be working okay. With this 14 gauge insulated wire, we're starting to kind of reach the limit of it here. Would be better if it was a little bigger or I had some smaller gauge wire. But for my purposes, I think this is working out okay for now. So you can see I'm winding this up in a crisscross pattern across the legs and that'll help prevent things from getting tangled. And there we are all wound up. So it looks like it's pretty well contained here and weighs, I don't know, three or four pounds maybe. So not so bad. So as you can see, I've made some changes here. I've got both ends of the dipole wound up. I've got my center feed coax attached with some quarter 20 bolts there in the middle. And of course, ring terminals on the end of all the wire here. And you can see here that at the top, I've got a bolt through the hole in the top of this telescoping painter's pole. So I think we're ready to deploy this thing over in the backyard, at least for an initial test. So you should be able to see here, I've got a piece of rebar pounded into the ground. And what I should be able to do is set the telescoping pole up, and then I'm just gonna use bungee cords to fasten it to the rebar like that. So what I'm gonna do before I mount the pole is to pull the wires off the support here. So let's unravel these and see if they get tangled up or anything. Theoretically, they shouldn't. The wires came off good, so now I'm gonna stand this up and attach it to the rebar. All right, that should hold up the center for now. Now I'll put some supports on the ends and make this thing an inverted V. Okay, so there's what the pole looks like. It's a little crooked, but it ought to be okay. Now one thing that I just realized, you guys may have already noticed it, is I forgot to connect the rest of the coax to the connector up there. But the nice thing about this being a telescoping pole is I should be able to just collapse it down so I can reach the connector up there. So I'll do that now. Okay. 
Okay, so here's a look at the antenna fully up in this position. You can see the center pole may have bent a little bit there when I got it up, but it should be okay for what we're doing. Over there on the far side, you can see one of the supports. I've got another piece of rebar pounded in the ground with my end insulator connected to that. The other leg is off in the opposite direction in pretty much the same configuration. So here's a closer look at the end insulator that I'm using. You can see it's just a piece of PVC wood with a couple of holes in it. Now I had already made this up from a previous configuration of this antenna, but I could just as easily have used one of the scrap pieces of that cutting board that I used to make the end insulator. So you can see the configuration is set up so that I've got a set of holes over here for the paracord that goes off to the end support. Now in this case, here in the yard, I've got the end support wrapped around a piece of rebar there, just so it's off the ground a bit. The tent peg over there really isn't necessary for this configuration, but I've got it on the end of the rope in case I want to use it somewhere else and I need sort of a peg or a hook to hook this thing on, I can kind of use that. Taking a closer look at the end insulator, you can see that the end of the antenna is actually over here and I've got a ring terminal crimped on there. And then I've got another length of wire that you can see here that goes off on the paracord. It's actually zip tied over here at one point. And I actually did that for tuning reasons. When I had this configured last week in a slightly different configuration, I found that I had cut the antenna too short initially. So this is how I ended up lengthening it out to get a good match. So now I'll just kind of pan across the whole antenna. You guys can get an idea of what it looks like there. You can see the other end of it is way over there behind the end of my Tahoe. So let's take a look at what the antenna looks like through the analyzer's eyes. So you can see we're starting off at about 7.3 megahertz or so, and the SWR is about 1.8 there. So if I tune down through the band, you can see as I get closer to 7.2 or so, the SWR gets down to 1.4 and even down to 1.3. So that's not too bad. I think that's going to be pretty usable for what I'm going to do, at least on 40 meters. Now one thing I forgot to mention with the setup is that I did bang a ground rod in the ground about a foot. This is a normally 8 foot long ground rod. I cut it in half and then like I said I banged it in the ground a little bit. Not so much that I can't get it out but good enough so it's making good connection. Then I just used a pair of vice grips to clamp one end of the ground braid to the ground rod pole and then I connected the other end with a uh, ring terminal here to the back of my radio. So as you can see I've brought out my ICOM 746 Pro and I am plugged into commercial power here in the garage for this test. I know there's a bit of a glare on the screen hopefully you guys can see what's going on though but anyway I'll turn the volume up and I'll scan through the band let's see if we can hear any activity and maybe make a contact or two. I'm not sure how the bands are today this is the first time I've turned on a radio so hopefully we'll at least hear something. No, I don't. Uh, I, I don't go to Hempfest anymore, and I, and I certainly don't travel any farther than I have to. Or... Right? Yeah, I know. What, I know what you mean. Travel is pretty hard for me. I'm, I'm in Florida, and I got to travel a thousand miles to get to Sussex. Yeah, I find the body odor at Hempfest far too offensive. <laughs> There was one fairly strong conversation there that I was able to pick up on, but that was about it. There were a few other weak signals in there, but nothing really usable. I'm not sure if the band is just dead right now or if it's the antenna. So what I think I might do now is park on a frequency here and call CQ and see if anybody comes back to me. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. November 1, November Uniform Golf. November 1, November Uniform Golf. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Calling CQ and standing by. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Kilo X-Ray 4, Mike India. Kilo X-Ray 4, Mike India. N1NUG here. Name is Rob. Romeo Oscar Bravo, and I'm located in northeastern Connecticut. How are you today? 
right now. Name here is Chan, Juliet, Alpha, no number. Have you five and three? Five and three in the South Carolina. I got water in the area. Go ahead. Okay, very good on the South Carolina. You are about five by three also here into Connecticut. I'm testing out a portable antenna right now. It's a 40 meter inverted V. Getting ready for field day. Copy the uh, inverted V. Okay, very good. Yeah, I know what you mean there. But hey, listen, I'll let you go. I don't want you getting wet out there or getting struck by lightning or anything, but thanks for coming back to me. Uh, 73 N1 NUG. N1 NUG, here's Whiskey Romeo 1 Bravo. Whiskey Romeo 1 Bravo, this is N1 NUG. Name here is Rob, Romeo Oscar Bravo in Northeast Connecticut. Good afternoon, Rob. Uh, you've got a nice signal, 5-9 uh, plus, into Gordon, Pennsylvania, northeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, just heard you calling CQ, and then Jan answered you before I got the mic picked up. So figured I'd say hello as well. Uh, my, uh, my home QTH currently is in Basra, Connecticut. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, down here in Gordon, Pennsylvania right now. So set up in my camper trailer just outside the house, just uh, enjoying a little operating time. I was looking on six meters for any signals, but uh, wasn't hearing anything with, with only my 40-meter dipole for an antenna. So didn't really think I'd hear much. But uh, you never know with the VHF contest going on. So my name is Larry, Lima Alpha Romeo Romeo Yankee, and uh, so, yeah, hearing you pretty well. Hope you're having a, a great afternoon. It's pretty nice here. It's been uh, blue skies and warm temperatures. Uh, N1, NUG, WR1B. Okay, very good on the camper setup. That, uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'd like to do that at some point. No plans to get a camper in the future, but I'm trying to starting to put together a little portable station here that I might be able to run out of the back of my SUV when I have a few minutes. And uh, like I said, that's what I'm testing out here now is my first uh, portable antenna. I am running commercial power right now though, it plugged into the garage, <laughs> but I'm sitting outside. It is beautiful here, uh, nice and warm and sunny. It was a great day. Did some hiking earlier today and figured I'd unwind a little bit here with some radio time before I got to start getting ready for work tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, very good on the Basra too. I know where that is down in the uh, the southern part of the state. I'm up uh, around the Tolland area, not too far from the University of Connecticut. Yeah, okay, very good. Um, I have a pretty good idea where you're at then. And uh, yeah, I'm also on commercial power. I've got an extension cord running from the back of the house out to power the trailer and, and uh, just set up in here. The house is kind of uh, in turmoil as we're doing all kinds of work here. And uh, so it was easier to set the radio up out in the camper and everything than try to clear a space and, and uh, be in the mix of everything else going on in the house. So <laughs> I think I'll leave the radio out here for at least a while and uh, catch a little operating time now and then. All right, I know my YL is heating supper and uh, so I don't want to be out here too long and, and uh, don't want to have that burn. <laughs> so I'd best uh, finish shutting down here and disconnect the antenna and all that sort of stuff and uh, head in. But nice to hear you, nice to meet you, Rob. And uh, uh, hope you find a few more contacts here this afternoon. N1NUG, this is WR1B73. Okay, very good. Well, hey, thanks for coming back to my call. Yeah, I think dinner's just about ready for me as well. <laughs> so maybe one or two more, and then I'm going to head in myself. But I uh, figured I'd sneak in a few contacts here and see if this antenna was working beforehand. But okay, 7-3, enjoy the rest of the day, and good luck on the house projects. I know how those can go, <laughs> but uh, but looks like uh, you got maybe uh, summertime here now, finally, to uh, get some of that work done. 7-3, N1-NUG. November 
3, Victor Mike Delta. November 3, Victor Mike Delta. Uh, N1 NUG here, November 1, November Uniform Golf. Name here is Rob, Romeo Oscar Bravo. Okay, very good, Todd. Thanks a lot for uh, the contact. No, I don't have you pulled up. I don't have a computer going out here. I'm sitting out in the uh, the backyard next to my garage. You probably heard me say I'm uh, testing out a portable antenna I just put together here, and I guess it's working if I'm uh, making contacts. So <laughs> thanks for uh, coming back here and letting me know. Okay, very good. Nothing wrong with the swan there. That's that's great. That radio is working real well for you. Sounds real good. I, I like the old stuff. I've got a, uh, a Drake station downstairs. It needs a little bit of work, but uh, when I get some time, I'm going to get that on the air. And I've got a Kenwood TS520 that I just picked up at a ham fest a few weeks ago that, that I've been having a lot of fun with. But I'm not running that right now. Right now I'm running an ICOM 746 Pro. But uh, I was tempted to bring the Kenwood out. I, uh, I almost did, but I opted for the, the ICOM here just for uh, the ease of tuning it for the moment, just to make sure the antenna was working. But, uh, but listen, thanks for coming back to me. I see that uh, I'm getting a phone call here from a friend of mine, so I'm going to give him a call back. But, uh, but thanks again for the, uh, the contact and let me know that I'm getting out. <laughs> 7-3 for now. N1NUG. Enjoy the day. Okay, so as you heard, we made a few contacts there, so it looks like the antenna is working out good. And as you can also tell, I've picked everything up for the evening. Maybe you can see behind me that I've lowered the antenna down for the evening. My wife needs me to run off to the store, and I think by the time I get back, the mosquitoes will be out. So I'm going to call it quits for tonight. But for now, it looks like the initial testing has proven to be a success. I think that antenna is going to work. I do plan to make some modifications to it. I'm either thinking of turning it into a fan dipole, so I at least have 20 meters to go along with 40, or maybe I'll turn it into a linked dipole. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go yet. But either way, I'll document what I do, so stay tuned to this channel to see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.